Hey, I'm Jacob. And I'm Dan. In this series, we're getting into some pretty difficult questions that we don't always have the answers to and don't always know who to ask to get the proper answers. This week, we're asking a particularly difficult question. What happens when we die? You know, I've heard stories of people who say they experienced what heaven was like after a major surgery or near-death experience, and they always talk about how amazing and beautiful it is. Yeah, I saw a movie with a young boy who had an experience like that. But when it comes to those situations, we don't always have the evidence to back it up. Let's watch this week's God story and see if we can get a little bit more background on that. Watch this. What kind of music do killer whales like? The orchestra. Hi everyone, it's Jen, and I'm so excited to be with you again today. I wanna to share with you a story about my very first pet I ever had. When I was 10 years old, I got a hamster whose name was Buddy. And he was really cute and brown and all soft and cuddly. But after a few short months of living, he passed away and it was really, really sad. So today's big idea is a question, and it's a big question that a lot of people ask. What happens when we die? This is a really good question and one that people have been asking for thousands of years. See, many of us are really afraid about dying and other people are just curious as to what happens. And here's the truth. We don't know exactly what happens right after we die, but as Christ followers, we have nothing to fear. Because of what Jesus did, his life, his death, and his resurrection, we don't have to fear death at all. We also know as Christ followers that we get to spend eternity with Jesus. So that's pretty awesome news. And we don't have to wait to start our eternal life then. We can start it right now. So in today's God story, we are going to listen in on a conversation between Jesus and his disciples. Let's look at it now. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. There are many rooms in my father's house. If this were not true, would I have told you that I am going there? Would I have told you that I would prepare a place for you there? If I go and do that, I will come back and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. The disciples' hearts were troubled because Jesus just told them what was going to happen to him, that he was going to be killed. It's cool too that Jesus describes where he's going as his father's house and that there are places there for the disciples and us too. Now you may be asking, will heaven actually be a great big house? Well, we don't really know. Again, this might just be a symbol to help us to really understand. And I realize I've said this a couple of times, but we don't really know exactly what happens. But what we do know is that we are going to be with God because we are Christ's followers. And that's what really matters. The disciples were a bit concerned and they wanted to learn more. Let's keep reading. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. So Thomas wanted clarity. He wanted to know exactly how to get to God, to his father's house. And how did Jesus respond? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. So to answer the question, what happens when we die? We may be curious about it, but we don't have to worry because we know Jesus and Jesus is the way. Let's see what happens next in the conversation. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? I have been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father? Don't you believe that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. The Father lives in me. He is the one who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father. Also believe that the Father is in me, or at least believe what the works I have been doing say about me. Wow, did things just get a little bit more confusing in here? Yeah, here's what's happening. The disciples are wrestling with this idea of the Father and the fact that Jesus is God's son and what that all means. And so Philip asks Jesus to show them God, the Father. And Jesus answers by saying he is in the Father and the Father is in him. And then all of our brains explode because Jesus is talking about something that is pretty big that honestly most adults don't even quite understand. See, we serve one God who is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It can get a little bit confusing. Now for the disciples, Jesus is trying to clarify this for them. So let's see how the discussion ends. 
What I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone who believes in me will do the works I have been doing. In fact, they will do even greater things. That's because I am going to the Father, and I will do anything you ask in my name. Then the Father will receive glory from the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name. I will do it. Jesus knows that his time on earth is nearing its end, and so he's going to be with the Father. We know that the Father is in heaven, and so Jesus is preparing to go to heaven. This is really tough for the disciples because they're sad that Jesus is going to be leaving them. And also, Jesus is talking about a lot of things that are pretty hard to understand. Maybe you are struggling to understand a little bit too, and that's okay because this is a really big question. But here is what you can hold on to. Jesus is with God the Father, and when we die, we don't need to be afraid because we know that Jesus is the way and we will get to be with him forever. And that's awesome news. All right, friends, it was so great to be with you again today. I will see you next time. So we know we don't have all the answers, but we know that when we die, we're gonna be with God. And because of that, there's nothing to fear. Yeah, it reminds me of this time I was on a road trip with some friends and we had to go through this long dark tunnel. And inside the tunnel is dark and you don't really know what's around you, but you see that light on the other end of the tunnel and you know your destination's on the other side. And it's good that you focused on that light. But for now, let's check in with our friends at the campfire and see whether Natalie and Jimmy can answer their questions. Hey guys, welcome back to the campfire. Um, this kind of round of conversation, we're gonna talk about when we die, what happens? What's the scoop? Uh, so I know this is kind of a big topic, but do you guys have any questions? What happens when we die? I think the reality is that we don't really know what happens exactly right after we die. Remember earlier on today when you guys were getting ready to go up on the high ropes? You don't really know what it's gonna be like when you, you get up there, right? But you can have certain ideas about what it's going to be like, but you don't actually find out until you're up on the high ropes kind of looking at what's going on around you. I think that's kind of like when we die. We know that when we die, we'll be with Jesus. That's awesome. That's the best thing ever. But beyond that, there's not a lot of really specific stuff we know about when we die. What do we know about heaven? Okay, this is gonna be the best two minutes of your life. What we know about heaven is that everybody gets a huge uh, eternal bag of their favorite candy and you all get jetpacks. So, just kidding. Heaven is actually like an English word. It's a way, it's a description word that um, points us towards what happens after this life is over and this new life that doesn't end with God begins. And what we know about heaven is exactly that. It is with God. That's the definition, the literal definition of uh, the word. The Jews, um, so the people that lived around Jesus in the first century when he was uh, alive, used the word um, actually shalom to describe what perfect union with God looked like, but also perfect union with like each other. And so that's actually the best picture of heaven, what it looks like, what it will be like that we have. It's shalom, unity, uh, linked togetherness with God and with each other. That there's, there's a part of this life that passes, suffering, uh, death, sickness, uh, separation from God, and a new life begins where we're linked in a shalom way with God. So what heaven is not, it's not the, a giant bag of Skittles, nor is it a jet pack. What heaven is, is it's something so much better. Awesome. So we get to all be together with God. Yeah. That sounds like heaven. Agreed. Are there any other questions? Do we become angels? Do you know what? A lot of people think that we do. A lot of people would say, you know, when so-and-so died, they became an angel and now they look down on you. And it's a really nice thought. It's a really nice idea. But the truth is that we don't become angels. We're, we're still, we're still people uh, and that angels are actually a separate entity, a separate being that's created, that was created by God. So angels, humans, totally different things. But uh, angels are cool and I really look forward to seeing some when uh, we do die. So 
Great questions, you guys. I love that you're thinking about these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have more time next time. But uh, for now, we're going to say peace out. Peace out, everyone. <laughs>